Hello, and welcome to another edition of the 80 Hour Workweek, helping residents and medical professionals reduce their workload using technology. This is produced by the Technology Committee at the EM Residency at Denver Health. And today we're going to talk about how to spend less time in communication hell. So this is really all of our goals. All of our goals are spending a Friday night or maybe a Tuesday night, if you work in the ED, on the couch, relaxing, enjoying yourself. And there was a period of time where I couldn't do this because about 30 minutes in, I would start to freak out. I would remember projects I had to catch up on, emails I had to reply to. And I found that I had a hard time relaxing because I was always keeping track of everything in my head uh, and uh, in my inbox. And realistically, this is what my inbox looked like. It was just one mailbox with tons of letters and, and mail. And I used it to prioritize things and respond to things, but quite frankly, most people's inbox has no sense of priority and has no sense of conversation. So I really needed to change up how I worked and how I communicated with others. And this is really what the ideal is. This is one of those trendy shared workspaces, but these spaces work out because you have a little section in the bottom left where you can work near other people on a laptop or bring up questions or issues. You've got little small tables where you can have a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Um, you've got little quiet nooks where you can work by yourself. And this realistically is how you should be communicating so that you communicate with different groups in different rooms in different ways rather than one uh, uh, inbox. And so what I was looking for was something that would allow me to communicate with teams based on the projects that I was uh, working with them on to compartmentalize and continue conversations. We'd have a meeting and then I'd want to continue that conversation outside of it and just sending an email um, seemed to not convey the same type of back and forth conversation. I wanted it to integrate with the other apps I already use like Google Docs and Google Calendar. I wanted to be able to track to-do lists and to-do items so that I knew what I was supposed to do and what other people were supposed to do. And I wanted it to allow for asynchronous conversations, which really rose in importance when I'm working with colleagues who are working the overnight or the day shift, but also when I'm working with people in other states and countries around the world on different time zones. And so this is uh, an example of what I use. This is Slack. So uh, what you can see here with Slack is it's a portal and you can see up here that this is the Denver EM Slack portal and there that's me, Matt Zuckerman. And you can see that under this portal there are different channels or threads that allow us to continue to have conversations. So for the tech committee, we talk about these 80 hour work week sessions in this channel here. And then you can see that this is a conversation that's ongoing down here. You can see that we can share uh, documents from Google Drive so that other people can look at them and comment on them and give positive feedback or negative feedback, maybe a smiley face emoji. And um, this works out really well. Also, just below this, we can have private conversations with other people in the channel, uh, similar to sending an email response to one versus all. And the great thing about this is it tracks everything. So even if I'm not a part of the conversation, I can go back when I have my head above water, when I have time, and I can find out what people have been saying about the senior lecture project or about the speakers that were having to come. So I found that Slack has been a very helpful way to compartmentalize some of our conversations. And the other nice thing about Slack is it works on different platforms. So you can access it via the web, you can access it via your phone, iPhone, or Android. Um, and so it allows us, who often are working away from an office environment, to kind of uh, check in on the conversation and, and keep responding. It gives you little notices when there is a message that you uh, haven't seen yet. Now, this is an alternative. So aside from Slack, um, there are competitors in the marketplace, and this is Asana. Now, Asana is similar in that it allows you to work with teams and to work with projects, and you can keep track of your teams on the left here and keep track of your um, projects and goals. But Asana makes it a tiny bit easier to assign tasks. With Slack, you often have to assign Slack tasks with a plugin or with a workaround, but with Asana, it's meant to assign tasks. So you can assign tasks to specific people, say when they start and when they end, and then you can have side conversations on those tasks. Also, Asana has a calendar, and similar to Slack, you can link to files. In the end, they both work really well. The big question is, 
trying to get your team onto it. So if no one on your team has Asana and they all have Slack, then I would work with Slack. If it's the other way around, then try working with Asana. And ultimately, what I used this for initially was for work projects, but also for collaborating at a distance with colleagues. And there are even some people who are using Asana as their own or Slack as their own personal communication uh, tool. So if they're taking a family vacation, inviting multiple family members, uh, Jim has to get the tickets, uh, Susan is going to work on the hotel. So as with anything, we tend to use these tools to solve problems in our life, not just problems in our work life. So you're going to look for either Slack as one of the tools, the first one I talked about, which has a pretty big community behind it, or Asana, which is a relatively newer tool in my life, but I find uh, sometimes focuses more on task management. And so ultimately, this is what you're hoping to get to, that you have different rooms and different channels for conversations that allow you to work with others when you need to, but also to kind of shut things down and work by yourself. And maybe off in the corner that you're not seeing here, maybe you'll find a spot to uh, to kind of relax uh, with your significant other and, and enjoy a movie and, and really get all of this out of your head. So I want to thank you for uh, listening to this. Hopefully you find this tips useful. You can uh, send us comments and tips at the tech committee at denverem.org. Um, this is from a big fan of ours. I just stayed out of communication hell with Slack and Asana via hashtag 80 hour workweek. It's huge. Thank you.